everyone, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing a kind of TBR for the rest of the year. I don't usually do TBRs unless I'm doing a readathon but I feel like I've got quite a few books lately that I either know I'm going to read before the end of the year or I just want to read them and so I just thought that instead of doing monthly TBRs or doing nothing at all I'd do a kind of in between and make a TBR for the rest of the year. Now I will say that this isn't a binding thing, these are just books that I might want to read. Some of them I do definitely know that I will be reading but they will be the ones that I mention first and then the rest of them I just feel like I might want to read them. Now this video doesn't include my university reads but they will of course be what most of my reading will be for the rest of the year. I'm just not going to talk about them because I don't know when I'll be reading them or what they're about or anything yet so yeah. So these will just be the books that I'm hoping to read outside of my university reading. I don't know how much time I'm going to get to do that but I suppose we'll find out in the next few months. <laughs> so the first few I'm going to mention really quickly because I've talked about this endlessly. But I'm going to be reading the Bone Season series by Samantha Shannon. But basically this is my all-time favourite series and the Bone Season is about a world where clairvoyants exist but being clairvoyant is illegal. Now the main character Paige Mahoney is a clairvoyant and because of this she is part of an underground crime gang and of course her abilities help her commit these crimes. But one day she's captured and then the story goes from there. I have said that synopsis so many times lately, oh my god. <laughs> but in case you somehow missed all of the videos that I've mentioned this in recently, I will be hosting a three month read along for these three books because the fourth book is coming out next year. So in October we will be reading The Bone Season, in November The Mime Order and then in December The Song Rising. Look out on my social media for more information but since I will be hosting the read along I do of course have to read these three by the end of the year. <laughs> Another one that I will have to read because I'm co-hosting a thing is The Gospel of Loki by Joanne M. Harris. This is the September and October book of the month for Mythotake with the theme being Norse mythology. Of course this one follows Loki. Loki is the god of mischief and that's pretty much all I know about him so I imagine that this book has quite a few mischievous mishaps inside it. <laughs> It is quite a short read so I don't think I'll have any trouble fitting this into my reading schedule at all but I'm quite intrigued to see what I think about it because Norse mythology is not a kind of genre that I lean to all that often so I don't know what I'll think of this but we'll find out in the next couple of months. <laughs> So the next books that I'm hoping to read pretty soon are God's Grave and Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. If you don't know what Never Nice is about then it's basically about a girl called Mia who is going to a school to learn how to become an assassin in order to get revenge on what happened to her parents. As I'm filming this Dark Dawn isn't out yet but it will be by the time this video goes up. But these are the second and third books in the Nevernight Chronicles. I read Nevernight pretty recently and absolutely loved it so I want to continue this series. I do plan to pick up God's Grave sometime in September and then as far as Dark Dawn goes that depends on my library because I obviously have the paperbacks of these and the paperback for the final book doesn't come out until June next year so I won't be buying it yet but I'm hoping that my library gets the final book in pretty soon and I can borrow it because I do want to keep up with the series and finish it off, talk to people about it because it's not going to end well, I already know it. <laughs> Another series that I'm hoping to continue but with much less certainty that it will be anytime soon is Juliet Marillier's Seven Waters series. This is the second book, the first one being The Daughter of the Forest. I think I read that one back in May. And I absolutely love Daughter of the Forest. It's a retelling of the Six Swans fairy tale. It also has many other alternate names and is also heavily inspired by Celtic mythology. And it follows a girl called Sorka who has six brothers and one day they have a spell put on them which turns them all into swans. In order to break the spell, Sorka has to go through the seemingly impossible task and she also has to be mute the entire time that she does it because if she makes a single noise then the spell won't break and all of her work will have been for nothing. I love how The Daughter of the Forest felt like such a classic fantasy. It was very much a slow moving one but I didn't mind that so much and I do want to continue the series however I'm very aware that this is like 650 pages long so I don't know whether this will be done this year because university reading exists. But I'm not too worried about it if I don't because with the books in the series they don't follow directly on from each other, they kind of go down an ancestral line. So this book follows the children of the main characters in the first book I believe so I don't think I have to worry too much about forgetting the storyline of the first book because this follows a different direction if that makes sense. <laughs> but I definitely do want to continue the series so I just thought I'd put this on this list and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> 
Next up we have one which is far from my usual kind of reads in that it's not fantasy or mythology related but this one is Misery by Stephen King. I specifically want to read this at Halloween because Stephen King is of course a horror author and this one follows an author who kills off his main character in his best-selling series, the main character being called Misery, and one day he has a car accident and when he wakes up he's not actually in a hospital but he finds himself in this kind of remote mountain cabin somewhere being held hostage by one of his biggest fans. This fan did not like the fact that he killed off his main character and so she's holding him hostage and basically forcing him to write a different ending. I've only read one other book by Stephen King before and that was Pet Cemetery, but I have read quite a few extracts of different books that he's written. Now I don't think that Stephen King's writing is brilliant and his books do include quite a lot of most of them, but this was written in the 1980s so I do have to acknowledge how we have different standards compared to then. But also as far as storylines go, I do think that Stephen King comes up with some pretty good stories. I know that this is one of Charlotte's favourite books as well, which is definitely one of the reasons why I picked it up, because Stephen King has so many books to choose from that it can be overwhelming trying to find somewhere to start. But I am hoping to read this one around Halloween because I just love Halloween and the atmosphere surrounding it. I love all the stories. So I'm hoping this one will help me get in the Halloween spirit. <laughs> we love an unintentional pun. Next up we have We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. This one follows a girl who is a legendary hunter and she kind of hunts for the people in her village, makes sure they don't starve. And everyone knows about this hunter but they all assume it's a man and she very much wants to keep it that way so that her identity is still anonymous. <laughs> I believe there's also a prince in this who I don't really know too much about but the prince and the hunter both have to set out on this journey to find a magical artifact and of course at some point their paths will cross. I've seen this one around a lot and I've seen really good things about it and I did say in my book haul that I did intend on reading this pretty much immediately but then I saw quite a lot of people calling it a light-hearted fantasy compared to a lot of the other books that I read and so I've actually decided to reserve this for when the inevitable stress of university sets in hard and I just want an easy read so that's why this is on this list because I imagine at some point in the coming months I am going to get very stressed and I'm just going to want something easy to read. <laughs> Next up is a bit of a random one and that is Theogony and Works and Days by Hesiod. Basically, Theogony is the genealogy of the gods and how they came to be, what things were like before the present order that we know of came to be established. And then Works and Days is basically a text about morals and why we should work every day and things like that. This is not even 100 pages long and I very well could sit here and read this right now but I'm not going to, so it's on this list because I do want to read this. I will be reading quite a lot of ancient Greek mythology and classics and things like that in the coming months and doing quite a lot of research on it, so I just figured that the beginning point should be when the gods came to be. There are quite a few ancient Greek plays I do hope to read by the end of the year, but I don't know what order I'll be doing them in or which ones I'll be prioritising, so for now I'm just putting this one on the list. <laughs> and then the final book I'm going to talk about is Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. This one is another one that I've gotten pretty recently and it follows a guy who is a headmaster, he's quite mild-mannered and quiet, but he ends up having to go out on this epic journey to find his wife, who goes missing not long after they've been married. It centres around a tower in which every single floor is a different kind of kingdom, a completely different place, and the main character has to ascend through this tower to get to where he needs to be. This is just one that I'm particularly intrigued about at the minute and I am hoping that I can get to it pretty soon because it's just not like anything I've heard of before and I want to see what it's like. <laughs> That's pretty much all I have to say on it, I'm afraid. <laughs> So yes, that was my somewhat tentative TBR for the rest of the year. Like I said, this is definitely not set in stone. Some of these I might not even read until sometime next year. Who knows, we'll find out. As always, let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts on them were if you have. Let me know which book you are hoping to prioritise before the end of this year. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please do that. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.